Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff that I found uh, for this episode. Starting off over at TechCrunch, uh, they have a review of the iPhone 5C. Now, uh, the 5C uh, it will not be uh, available until uh, September 20th, I think, 18th, 20th. It's later this week, but uh, still, nonetheless, pretty cool. It's, it's a few days away. They have a pretty uh, in-depth review of it. Uh, if you're looking for a less expensive uh, iPhone uh, as opposed to the 5S, but you don't want the 4S, this might be a, a nice alternative. So definitely uh, give the review uh, uh, a read over if you are looking to get a new phone. From Slash Gear, uh, they have an iPhone 5S review. Pretty neat. Uh, nice little rundown of a lot of the really cool stuff uh, that comes with the 5S. I thought it was a pretty interesting read. Um, I've got the 5 which I've had for less than a year now. Um, I've already dropped it once. You can see the little nick here. Let me get this up in front of the camera. You can see the little, uh, yeah, see that? Um, I don't generally put cases on my phones. But anyway, uh, I, I may be getting the next iPhone after the 5S seen as I can't really upgrade my current phone unless I pay some money, which I'm not that interested in doing. So um, should be pretty interesting to see what Apple comes up with next year. From Hack a Day, explaining the low-level stuff you don't know about ARM programming. That's right. Most of us don't realize how spoiled we are with the different development environments available on the Internet. If someone wants to start a blank project on a new ARM slash DSP slash whatever platform, he usually fires up the, the dedicated integrated development environment and starts coding a C or C++ program. However, there are many initialization routines and scripts required for with your program before it can run correctly. So he's got this great article that explains what these things are by starting a blank project without using any IDE. I thought this was pretty cool. This is definitely something you should check out, especially if you do any develop, uh, embedded development. Um, definitely uh, an eye-opener, to say the least. Over at videocopilot.net, they have on their blog a new uh, posting. The main titles for Star Trek Into Darkness, they have a rundown of what how they... Uh, uh, created the titles for star trek which are by the way absolutely gorgeous um definitely uh uh take a look at it and uh th they've got it posted it's a video obviously they've got it posted up on youtube you can watch it in vimeo and you can also just watch it directly on vi the video copilot website so pretty neat definitely uh check that out especially if you are a star trek fan from make arduino plus modules equals feds fez medusa uh there's no denying the fact that everyone loves the ever popular arduino however the shield approach used by arduino and i you know kind of take exception to the shield approach uh to the arduino where you've got the two rows of pins here plus the header here um it doesn't always lend itself to easy expansion well, uh, there's there are other ways of doing this. There's a gadgeteer prototyping platform um, that provides modules, and there's you know different very ways to hook stuff up. So it looks like there's going to be a module-based Arduino derivative that will allow the use of gadgeteer modules with Arduino, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a Kickstarter for the Fez Medusa. It, it was launched last week by GHI Electronics. The Medusa is a family of mainboards and a shield that give Gadgeteer compatible sockets to the Arduino world. 
Uh, the use of sockets and modules give Arduino projects much more flexibility than is currently available with Shields and adds several new sources of modules from several companies to Arduino developers. Also, if you have a collection of Gadgeteer modules already, then it's very likely you'll be able to use many of them with the Fez Medusa. So pretty awesome. Definitely take a look at that. From uh, lego.gizmodo.com, archaeologists use Lego to restore a 3,000-year-old mummy sarcophagus. This is epic. The Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge recently restored a 3,000-year-old mummy case using Lego frames. The sarcophagus is now restored to its former glory, complete with an internal Lego support system. This is just further proof that there's, there's literally nothing that Lego can't do. Yeah, I agree. You know, Lego's a pretty big part of uh, uh, what goes on over here at my house. Uh, over at youtube.com, there's a, uh, a poster over there. Computer file, uh, is the channel name and he's, uh, got posted the CERN computing center and mouse farm. Pretty interesting walkthrough. Very interesting walkthrough for, uh, the CERN computing center. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought I'd let everyone uh, get get themselves a watch as well. And, uh, you know, definitely check it out. Uh, as always, everything is linked up in the show notes. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. And uh, please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.